Good morning for all of you. It's a pleasure to be here again uh, talking with you about neurosurgery. And today we're going to, to talk a little bit about uh, the microsurgical anatomy of the temporal bone. So why do we need, what are the cases in which we need to, to use a temporal bone to approach uh, lesions? Um, of course, there, there are the lesions that are inside the temporal bone, but most of the time, we surgeons, we use the temporal bone as a, a route to reach uh, a tumor. So usually what you're gonna do, you use the temporal bone to reach lesions around the, the petroclival junctions or lesions that are here at the jugular foramen. So these are the most common uh, used uh, uh, temporal bone routes that we use. And for doing that, we have to be uh, uh, really uh, um, with uh, uh, the two aspects of temporal bone surgery. You have to understand the anatomy of the temporal bone through the middle fossa, you do have to understand the anatomy of the temporal bone from a lateral uh, uh, perspective. So you have to understand both of these. So these are usually the, the, the ways that we approach the temporal bone. All we drill structures here, right in front of the ICA to reach the clivus and, and the, the, the petrous apex or we drill the lateral portion of the temporal bone, the mastoid portion, to reach the optic capsule and open this dura to treat uh, also meningiomas. So you have to understand the, the anatomy from the lateral way, the lateral view, to make approaches like this, which is the, uh, the uh, pre-sigmoid approach that we usually uh, use to operate such lesions like this one. This is the end of the surgery. You see the fifth here, you see the third here, you see the, the clivals and the whole tumor was removed through this approach. Or, and you have to understand the anatomy on a perspective of the middle fossa. So you can uh, 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 approach lesions like this. This is lateral, you see the temporal ridge and and that's, that's the two points. So you have to drill bone around this, this region to, to approach uh, uh, meningiomas of this, uh, this location. So that's, that's the, the, the main thing. You have to understand the temporal anatomy, bone anatomy from these two views, lateral view and middle fossa view. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the portions of the temporal bone and their sur surgical uh, uh, importances. First, we start with the squamous part. This is the, mo the part that we most, uh, uh, we usually approach through the frontolateral uh, uh, approach, the subterion approach, OZ, subtemporal. The squamous part is this part here, okay? And we have to resect this for many, for, uh, many uh, 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 lesions. But some of, to understand the, 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 the mastoid and the, the, the relationships here, you have to keep some, some good uh, import and important structures. One of the, the, the structures is the superior temporal line. It starts here, right in the lateral portion of the orbit, and it runs backward toward the, the, the zygomatic arch. And the superior temporal line, when it gets uh, right here uh, in, the, in the upper part of the mastoid, we, we call it supramiatal line. And why is the supramiatal line important? When you are drilling the mastoid bone, one of the first things that you have to know is where is the mastoid cavity and where is the middle fossa? And the supermiatal line, which is an extension of the superior temporal line, gives you the landmark to see, oh, of, uh, above this, I have middle fossa. Below this, I have mastoid cavity. That's the first, uh, 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 the first landmark that you have to, to understand. We'll see the, 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 the mastoid, how we dissect this 
uh, in a in a step way to show the anatomy. I'll show you all, all the landmarks. The other uh, portion, the second portion of the temporal bone, which is surgically important, it's the tympanic bone. That is this bone here, which forms uh, the floor and the lateral uh, uh, portion of uh, the external auditory meatus. Why is this important in certain neurosurgery? When you're dealing with foramen jugular lesions of glomus jugulari, the tympanic bone, which we see here, it points to our this structure, which is the internal carotid artery. So if you wanted to expose the internal carotid artery, artery for a glomus jugulari, you, you have you need to follow the tympanic bone. When you keep drilling, 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 in the very uh, uh, deep portion of the tympanic bone, you find the, the, the ICA. So that's the surgical importance of this point. The styloid portion is the third portion. It's also a neurosurgically, it's important from the surgical view. Why? The styloid is, is this uh, uh, little uh, uh, projection here. And uh, many muscles which uh, are attached to the hyoid bone or to the, the pharynx are touches like the hyoglossus, uh, stiloglossus, uh, stilohyoid muscle, they are attached here. And this, uh, the styloid process points you where the positions of the jugular vein and the ICA in the neck, okay? So when you, you, when you feel this, you know, oh, here we have the ICA, we have the, the, the jugular vein, and right behind we have the, the facial nerve. It points the, the, the silo, uh, uh, mastoid foramen. So, Let's talk about the mastoid portion of this temporal bone. This uh, we are we are going we are coming back to this uh, picture later to, for you to understand the what are the extensions of the pre sigmoid approach. We are going to see uh, faster here, but this is a dissection from the middle fossa. This is anterior. This is posterior. You see uh, uh, the medulla here, the vertebral arteries, and the mastoid portion of the temporal bone. It starts here at the, the, the lateral wall of the mastoid. And it ends here at the, the semicircular canals, which we call the optic capsule. So here starts the mastoid portion. This is the end of the, of the mastoid portion. Medial to the optic capsule, we have petrosal portion of the temporal bone. So this is the mastoid and also the middle ear is part of the, the mastoid portion of the temporal bone. So we are going to, to see uh, uh, the landmarks for drilling. That, that's, it's important for you to do, it, to do this today. Uh, so when uh, uh, surgery of the temporal bone is exactly the surgery we do in, in the cadaver. So we, when you drill a temporal bone on the cadaver, you will see it's the same surgery that you do in, in a live person, because it's bone. So when you look at the mastoid like this, you have to, to find out some important structures uh, in, in, for surgery. The first one I already showed for, shown to you, which is the, the division between mastoid cavity down here and uh, supratensorial compartment above, which is the supramiata line. So that's the first uh, 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 landmark that you have to find. I already show you. The second landmark, it's and it, which is uh, uh, an important step, and it's the first important structure that you're going to find when you're drilling the temporal bone, is the 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 sigmoid sinus. So what are the landmarks for the sigmoid sinus? This uh, suture, that is the parietal mastoid suture, why? This is the asterion, and the asterion points to the lower border of the junction between the sigmoid and transverse sinuses. And mm -hmm. the, the meeting of the parietal uh, mastoid suture with the, the super uh, meta line give us the superior the portion of, of the junction yeah. and uh, transverse sinuses. So this is, these two landmarks, they are important for surgery. 
The third landmark that you have to know is where the uh, otic capsule, the semicircular canals, and also the facial nerve. This, we're going to find uh, building a triangle which passes at uh, the border of the, 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 the external acoustic meatus, at a point that we call the, the spine of Henley. The supermeata line and another line which passes here at the posterior portion of the, the, the external acoustic meatus. You see this? Keep this, this, this uh, image in mind, and when you drill it, that's what you're going to find. So, supermeatal line, middle fossa, mastoid cavity. We're, here we have parietal mastoid suture, lower border of the junction of the transverse and sigmoid sinuses, junction between the parietal mastoid suture with the supermeatal line, superior border of the junction of transverse and sigmoid sinus. The supermeatal super triangle that we, we, we built in the, in the other, uh, other uh, image give us the position of the otic capsule and also of the facial nerve. So when we're drilling the temporal bone to do a pre-sigmoid approach, these are the main landmarks that you have to keep in mind. If you keep in mind these and follow these, you're going to find the, the, all these, the important structures. So a step-by-step -step dissection to see what's the anatomy inside the mastoid portion of the temporal bone. So we start here, okay? Uh, you have to draw uh, uh, an area of, of work. Usually we use the, 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 the drill to make a line here, a line at the supermeatal line, and a line along the external acoustic meters. And when you start to drill, don't make a holes in the, in the temporal bone. Why? We never know how deep is uh, uh, the sigmoid sinus. So you start the drill and make a hole, you might open the sigmoid sinus when you have a big bleeding here. So what you have to do is drill by layers. Layers. So use the drill like this, not like this. Okay? So when we take the, 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 the cortical bone out, this is the first layer that you're going to find. You're going to find this little uh, uh, mastoid cells, okay? And this little mastoid cells, you keep drilling, 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 and all the important structures inside the temporal bone, they are covered by hard bone. This is soft bone. You get the drill in a low speed, you keep drilling, and then the cells are, 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 have, are, removing, are removed. And when you find something which the sigmoid tires or the capsule, the bone gets really hard. So you know, I mean, on a on a on a on a, a noble structure. So you keep drilling this, taking the cells off, and you will find the sigmoid sinus here, and you find uh, in the front of of the sigmoid sinus in this region a big mastoid air cell. This big mastoid air cell we call the antrum of the mastoid, and the antrum of the mastoid is the point where you find the otic capsule and the facial nerve. So when you remove this bone here and open this air cell, we're gonna find this solid block of bone. The solid block of bone is the otic capsule. So see the sigmoid sinus? Hard bone. See the otic capsule? Hard bone. So this you can take easily with the, 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 the drill in the, low, uh, in the low rotation, but this one you can't. So basically what we do in surgery on these lesions is here is the external acoustic meatus, supermeata line, posterior border of the mastoid. So that's the same thing that you are going to do today. So we start, you make your area of work, take bone here, take bone here, take a, draw a line here, sorry for that. So this is the area of work, okay? So you draw this line, and then you start to take the, the bone like this, never making holes. 
So keep uh, taking the bone out, take, take the mastoid their cells, and you find the first area of solid bone, which will give you the position of the, the sigmoid sinus. So we keep drilling. Let me pass this a little bit. It's... Oh, okay. So we take the cortical bone and you keep drilling the air cells, never making holes. And the next structure that you find, it's the solid bone here, which, which, give, us the, which give us the position of the sigmoid sinus. And after you find the sinus, you have to keep drilling. Here you find the mastoid antrum, right here. And if you keep taking bone out, you find the otic capsule. That, so that's the end of the surgery, sigmoid sinus. Here's the jugular bone. Here's the otic capsule. And this is the uh, uh, epitympanic uh, uh, recess, which goes inside the middle ear. So for the basic mastoidectomy, that is what most of the time we surgeons need, this is the end of the exposure. That's what we need, okay? So at the end of that procedure, that's the vision that, we gonna, that you're going to see. You're going to see the sigmoid sinus here. You see the, the, the middle fossa here, the otic capsule, and you find the facial nerve. Most of the time, we don't want to expose, but this is an anatomy uh, class, so we have, I have to show you where is the facial nerve. Here you see the middle ear, you see the incus here, okay, the incus bone here the style of mastoid foramen and the position of the facial nerve. This, is, this slide is very important to understand what we do in pre-sigmoid approach. This dura here between the jugular bulb, the sigmoid sinus, the middle fossa, the angle of the sigmoid sinus with the middle fossa we call the citelli triangle. And this blue thing here is the superior petrosal sinus. And the captic optic capsule, this is called the Troutman's triangle. Why this is important? This is the dura that we are going to open when you do a pre sigmoid approach. You will reach the posterior fossa through this opening here. And why this is important? If the sinus, the sigmoid sinus is too uh, in front, too forward, you won't have space here. And the principles of, of the extensions of the pre-sigmoid approach, retrolabirintin, translabirintin, uh, transcochlear, is removable bone here to gain space on Troutman's triangle. So this is a very important slide to understand the pre-sigmoid approaches. Um, Usually, we neurosurgeons, we deal with the, the middle ear, which is part of the mastoid portion of the temporal bone, to treat uh, usually uh, uh, paragangliomas. So uh, the jugular bulb is here, and we're going to see on the next slide, I think, that the, the, the floor of the middle ear is the roof of the jugular bulb. That's why the jugular, the jugular glomus jugulari, they grow inside the, the, the middle ear. I'll show you. So uh, for in some of the cases, we have to go inside the middle ear. We have to open all, we have to take the, 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 all the, the, the structures of the ear and we have to open uh, the, the, the walls of the, the external acoustic meatus and get inside the, the middle ear. So when you remove the tympanic membrane, which is here, you, you can see the facial nerve here is the cordon tympani, uh, which, uh, uh, which comes here uh, at this portion. You see the incus here, the malleus here, and the staples here. And when we see the floor of the, the external, the middle ear, you see a blue thing here, which is in relationship with this region, which is the jugular bulb. So the floor of the middle ear is the roof of the jugular so that's why uh, paragangliomas, they grow here and get inside this, this portion. Okay, so this is the floor of the middle ear. When we see the middle ear from, from behind, we have 
uh, on the media wall, um, three structures that uh, you're gonna, four structures in fact. One is, uh, is the vestibule, uh, the vestibule which is here, which connects, it, from here it, it connects all the semicircular canals inside the, 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 the optic capsule. This is the promontory, which is the projection of the cochlea. This is the round window where uh, 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 the staples, the plate of the staple, the, it fixes to the, to the inner ear. So from here, behind here, you have inner ear. Uh, outside, you have middle ear. And this is the facial nerve, which runs in the roof of, of the lat of the medial wall. So these are the structures that you're going to see the, 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 in the middle. So we see the, 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 the roof, the floor of the external acoustic meatus, the medial wall, the lateral wall is the tympanic membrane, and the, and the anterior wall is formed by, uh, uh, by this structure here, which is the, the, the eustachian tube or the, 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 uh, the auditive tube. I don't know how to... Sorry, I forgot the, the word for this. Okay, so keeping this in mind, what are, what are the pre-sigmoid approaches? What they do? So this is the mastoid cavity, uh, middle ear, uh, uh, external acoustic meatus, middle ear here, uh, ear here, optic capsule, sigmoid sinus. This is the dura of the Troutman's triangle. So when you do a pre-sigmoid approach, you take this, you get inside here. This is the dura that you're going to open to reach this region. So what are the, the what do retrolabyrinthine, uh, partial labyrinthectomy, uh, translabyrinthine, and transcochlear approach do? We remove bone here to wider this dura matrix. So when, when most of the time we surgeons do a retrolabyrinthine approach, which is an approach uh, 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 behind the, mid, the, the optic capsule. So you just, you stop here, open the door here, and approach the tumor through here. If you want to do a trans, uh, translabyrinthine, we remove all of the optic capsule and expose the, the, the nerves at the, the, the uh, here at the internal acoustic meatus. If you want to, to move more toward the clivus, we transpose the facial nerve, drill everything here as at this bone here, and then we'll get really close to the clivus in this region. So this is the principle. So we remove bone here and we make this dura area, this dura area bigger. If you look inside the the the, the the posterior fossa, retro labyrinthine approach. This little, only this little space. Partial labyrinthectomy, this space. Partial labyrinthectomy with apisectomy, this space. Uh, Translabyrinthine approach, this space. What you gain from the others, you can see the, 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 you can see the, the, uh, the facial nerve and the eighth nerve. Transcochlear, all of this. So that's what you get. And if you see, and if you look at the first, uh, first image, the, the hole is really small. So what makes the approach uh, uh, usable? When you cut the tentorial dura and you connect it with a temporal uh, craniotomy. When you combine the mastoidectomy with the subtemporal view, you have this view of, of the, the clivus. That's what you see. To finish, those, this is the basic anatomy to understand the pre-sigmoid approach. To understand the, the anterior petrosectomy, we have to understand this portion of the bone. So here you have the trigeminal, uh, the trigeminal nerve, V3, V2, be one. The main, the main structure to, to understand the anatomy here is this little nerve which comes right over 
the, the ICA, which is the Great Superficial Petrosal Nerve. When you're peeling Borba, uh, I don't know, uh, the one who gives the, the lecture of the uh, anterior petrosal approach, we've shown this nerve. Whenever it's in front of this, of this uh, nerve, and uh, the third, we call the Kawasi Triangle. Here is where we do work. If you work be, uh, in front of the great superficial petrosal nerve, you're gonna find the dangerous structures. So never drill this way. You usually don't drill this way. You have to drill this way, okay? So when you see here, what are the structures? You see the great superficial petrosal nerve, so you know that below it, we have the ICA. The great superficial petrosal nerve it's an extension of the geniculate ganglion, which is here. Here is the, the, the intercanicular portion of the facial and the tympanic portion of the facial. In the angle formed by these two structures, we are gonna find a hard bone and two millimeters below, we're gonna see the cochlea. So if you are doing a, a, a middle false approach, anterior petrosectomy, you never drill here in this space. We have to drill here in front of here. Below, in front of this, the, the great superficial petrosal nerve, you're gonna find this is the, the stacking tube, okay? And you'll find the middle meningeal artery. Looking it uh, uh, in a more uh, uh, zoomed way, that's what you're gonna see. Great superficial petrosal nerve, V3, internal carotid artery, uh, this is the nucleat ganglion, facial nerve, and this angle make forms with uh, the cochlea, is where we find the cochlea. In front of the great superficial petrosal nerve, we're going to see the stachia tube, middle ear, and uh, uh, the middle major artery, okay? So when we're doing anterior petrosectomy, what you're going to take out? So this is uh, uh, the drew of the superior petrosal uh, sinus, this is the porus trigeminalis, and the macus cave is right here. We removed, and we have to remove all this bone. All the way, you may remove all this bone, all the way to the petrous apex. There is no, uh, no uh, noble structures here. Everything is just bone, you can drill and can remove it, okay? So that's what, um, what I'm gonna say. That's just to show where do I live in Brazil. That's South America. That's, uh, here's Brazil. This is my state. It looks like a head, you know. And this is my city, Belo Horizonte. It's close to Sao Paulo is here. Uh, Rio is here. So this is Minas Gerais. That's how the landscape looks like. And this is Belo Horizonte. It's the third biggest city in Brazil, six million people. Thank you very much for this time here. Thank you, Dr. Sofiano. Thank you very much for this opportunity here. Have a nice day.